Hi, my name is Keith Smith and uh, welcome to this video on uh, lab 3 which is about jogging the robot. Uh, in this lab we're going to look at two different ways we can jog the robot or two different coordinate systems that we can use to manually jog the, jog the robot and that will be using uh, the joint and the world coordinate systems. Okay, before we get started I just want to uh, look at a couple of uh, preliminaries uh, before we start jogging the robot. And one of them is bringing in your teach pendant, and then the other one is uh, looking at the mouse controls. So first thing we'll do is bring in the teach pendant, and that happens by just clicking on this icon in the upper left-hand corner. And then once your teach pendant's in there, you can move it around. If it's say if it was in the way of your uh, view of the robot, you can just move it over to the side. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit more about this later. But, uh, the next thing is the uh, how the mouse controls. So um, one, one of the things you could do is you can bring in this menu um, uh, down here where it says mouse con uh, commands and then it will show you what, what the buttons on your mouse will do. Uh, we're primarily going to be concerned with these, um, these four in the left hand side. So uh, a right drag, so if I click my uh, right button on my mouse and drag, I can rotate the view of my robot. So that's for rotate to pan, so to move it in a uh, linear fashion. I can, uh, the easiest thing to do is just to click down on your scroll button, so your middle button really, and then you can drag the robot uh, to where you want it. Uh, zooming in and out, so that involves uh, the, the middle um, scroll, but, or scroll button, so if I, scroll, I can scroll out or scroll in to uh, uh, look at things. And then um, we won't be using this right away, but uh, uh, a left click on any object in the in the project will select that object. So, for instance, if I wanted to select the robot itself, or say I wanted to select this um, fixture on the table, uh, I can uh, focus the attention on that fixture by clicking it with my left button. Okay, so that's how to get started. Uh, this just gets in my way, so I don't usually have that. Um, screen up. Okay, so uh, let's get to uh, jogging the robot. So uh, there's just going to be a couple uh, little differences here. I mean, we have a teach pendant, um, but the teach pendant in the real world, uh, you would need to uh, hold the dead man switch with both hands on the back of the uh, teach pendant. Uh, so we don't need to do that in RoboGuide. But uh, and the other thing is, uh, usually when we're jogging the button, the uh, robot. Um, or, or for other reasons, we'll need to click and hold the shift key down. So uh, with uh, in RoboGuide, we would just need to click it and the shift key would stay engaged. All right, so those are the only differences. Okay, so um, the uh, first thing we'll look at is uh, robot speed. So at 100%, this robot's going to move pretty quickly, and I'd have difficulty uh, controlling it in this, in this uh, project. So. Uh, I'd want to turn down the um, the percentage. So this is 100% would be maximum. So I'd want to uh, change the percentage. Sorry about the break. So um, to do that, uh, I would use these uh, two keys down here. One is that, so one of the keys is to slow down the robot, and then the other one would be to uh, speed it up. So I'm going to start out at about, I'm thinking about 20%. So to do that, I would click the down button, and uh, eventually I would get down to uh, 20%. W one of the things I should show you is that uh, you can move um, the speed in, in bigger increments by holding down the shift key, and then when I um, click up, I'm at 50, another click, I'm at 100. So again, and so if I want to slow it down, down, uh, one click is 50, the next click is 5, which 5 to me is a little slow, 50 is a little fast, so that's why I kind of like it somewhere around 20, 25 nuts. I have to uh, release the shift button in order to be able to do that. The other thing uh, uh, we'll need to set is which coordinate system we're going to be moving in. So we can, uh, in this project, in this uh, lab, we're only going to be uh, moving in joints. 
and world. So uh, uh, to, to right now, you can see in the upper right hand corner of the teach pen, it shows us that we're in joint. So we're going to be moving in joint. And uh, if I wanted to change that, I would change the coordinate. Uh, I would click on the coordinate button, and that would change that from. So right now it's joint. Uh, we'll learn uh, more about this other one. It's called jog frame. Then there's world. This is the other one that we're going to be using. There's tool, user, uh, and then we're back to join. Another way to look at the options is to hold down the shift key. And then when I hit coordinate, I can see all those same five options right here. And I'm going to select join. So we're going to be moving in joint right now. Okay, so uh, let's get started. Uh, moving the robot and join. So um, in reality we would have to hold the deadman switch on the back of the peach teach pendant, which of course we don't have to do in RoboGuide, but we still also would have to hold down the shift key. Uh, and in uh, normally you'd be just uh, holding this shift key down while the robot moved. And if you let go of that shift button, the robot would stop. Uh, but in uh, RoboGuide we're just going to have to click it and you can see that the shift key is not engaged. And then we're going to be looking, focusing on moving the robot in these six uh, axes, so or these six joints, and um, because this is a six-axis robot, and uh, so we have uh, six different axes that can rotate. And uh, so if we're in joint one, uh, that'd be these two buttons here. So we can either move in the positive direction of joint one. So can see the robot rotating in the positive direction or we can rotate in the negative direction so you can see that it's swiveling on its uh, we call that the waist uh, so it's swiveling back and forth in joint two uh, let me uh, give us a kind of a side view so we can see what this is going to look like so when we move in joint two uh, we're moving uh, that's this joint right here and uh, we're, we can move uh, forward backwards with joint two and then joint three is going to kind of move this uh, robot up the arm up and down and then uh, joint four uh, we're going to swivel and joint five uh, will rotate the tool uh, forward or backwards and then joint six, I'm going to zoom in on this. So joint six is the rotation uh, of the tool itself. So you can see that as I rotate um, joint six, uh, you can see this is slowly rotating around. And we'll just speed that up a little bit. OK. So um, that's, uh, that's moving the robot in joint. And to uh, get back to the starting place, which I kind of like to do sometimes, I put a little program in uh, both Robo uh, Guide Project, but also at school, uh, to get the robot back to its home position. So if you just click on Edit, uh, you'll be brought to the Home uh, program. And with the Shift key down, you just click Forward, and then the robot will return to its home position. OK, so uh, that was. Uh, moving in joint, and then the other option is to move in world. And uh, we discussed this in class, uh, the differences between the two. But if I hit the coordinate system, uh, and I had my shift key already depressed, uh, if I select world, I'm going to be moving in world now. So with the shift key uh, still depressed, and um, I'm going to slow down this uh, travel speed just a little bit. Uh, when I um, when I move now, now this looks will look a little bit more traditional for those who are used to working on CNC machines. When I move in the Z down, notice the tool as it moves does not rotate; it stays perpendicular to the table. Then I can move in the Y axis, which is well, it's from left to right. So in the y-axis or in the x-axis, which is towards the robot or away from the robot. Okay, so that's uh, moving in world. Okay, so I'm just going to put it back into its own position. So I'm gonna hit the, I have the shift key down. I'm going to hit forward, 
and the robot's back into its uh, home position. If uh, you do have any problems, if you get a uh, red alarm up here at the top, uh, usually you can clear the, it'll tell you what's going on, and so hopefully you'll be able to kind of figure out what you did wrong. And then uh, if you click the uh, reset button right here, uh, that should clear that error. All right, so have fun uh, working on RoboGuide at home. So uh, thanks, thanks for watching.